morning, Pilgrim Lutheran Church, and welcome to worship. I'm glad that you found us online this morning. We will continue to send updates regarding worship and our life together via email um, and the Pilgrim's Progress that goes out to all of us. If you are not getting those communications, please shoot us a message or comment on Facebook or call the church office and make sure that we get you on that list so that you can stay updated with the latest information and what our life together looks like. So with that, we begin worship and let us prepare our hearts. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we, may, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And together we say, Amen. We continue with our gospel lesson this morning, which comes 
from the 13th chapter of Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let it grow, let it grow, like it did so long ago. It is just one tiny seed, but it's all we really need. It's time to change the life we lead, time to let it grow. Last week I had a conversation in the parking lot after church about the beauty found in the imagination of a child. It was said that there is a little bit of that within each of us, really, that we all have an inner child. One thing you will learn about me is that I am not afraid to let that little child run from time to time. I'm a fan of Disney and can use my children as an excuse to watch cartoons and animated movies. This morning, I started with those lyrics from the 2012 movie Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. Many of you likely know the story, but for those of you who don't, the Lorax is a tiny orange character who speaks for the trees and pleads that they not be torn down. We again, with this inner child inside of us, watch as the onceler chops down all of the trees, forcing wildlife out of the place that they have called home. This was destructive. The last tree was chopped down, leading people to breathe in terrible air and blow up inflatable trees in their yards. It really is quite a sad story. What should be good and beautiful is ruined, and hope seems lost. This morning we return to the 13th chapter of Matthew, right after the parable of the sower, where Jesus tells another parable about the planting of seeds. Here the master sows seeds, but we read that the evil one comes along and sows weeds. As the seeds begin to sprout, the slaves notice that there are weeds throughout the field. They ask the master if the seed was bad. Great care was taken by the master. This should have been a beautiful harvest, yet it now appears to be ruined. In the midst of all of the good things that God has sown, 
the evil one sowed weeds. God intended and desired there to be a fruitful and bountiful harvest, but evil was sown. The result? A complicated mess of weeds and wheat. With roots intertwined, it seems there is so little that the servants can do to fix this. I don't know about you, but I have genuinely endure, enjoyed the outdoor services that we've had recently. Now, I understand that we miss being in the sanctuary, and I, I don't want to dismiss that. But there was something beautiful about our time outside, surrounded by nature. I think with the, all of the coronavirus stuff and staying at home, we've been able to just be around nature a little bit more. We know that God created all of this and saw that it was good. God created the trees that provide us with shade. God created the birds that stir in those trees. God's breeze blows through the leaves and helps to keep us cool. In the midst of all that beautiful creating, God created you, my friends. And of course, God said that all of creation was good. But in fact, God saw us humans created in God's image and not just saw them as good, but saw us as very good. Like the master in this week's parable, God sows good, very good, and beautiful things. Things no one else could ever have dreamed to create. The beauty of God's creation is jaw-dropping and such a wonderful gift. But enter the seeds of the evil one. We understand that God's beautiful creation is valuable, but we also know that there is brokenness in the way that we treat it. From the destruction of trees to the pollution that we put in the air, this beautiful creation struggles to breathe. In the name of convenience and advancement, pain and suffering come upon this beautiful earth that God created. And sadly, there is no magical orange Lorax that follows us to remind us of this. Just as the earth experiences brokenness, we humans do too. God created us and said that we were very good. God intended that to be so. God created us with the desire for us to thrive. Yet we know that evil and brokenness are present. That there are weeds among us. We know this all too well. At one time or another, we have all experienced despair and grief in this life. We have been in arguments with those we love. We have experienced the loss of loved ones. We have watched helplessly as someone receives a diagnosis that is earth-shattering and heart-breaking. The destruction and pain that comes with addiction and alcoholism impacts so many families. There are times in our life where we cry out and ask, Why, God? Why is this happening? God, why are you not doing anything about this? God, do you even care? God created us and saw that we were very good. God looked all around and was satisfied. God sowed good seed, intending for our lives to be wonderful, meaningful, and joyous. God did not desire for us to suffer, friends. It was not part of God's design for us to experience such pain and brokenness. God does not make such things happen. But they are, no doubt, a part of our reality as human beings. The servants in our story take notice of the weeds in the field, and they desire an immediate solution, not unlike ourselves, right? They want to fix the problem. They want full control of the situation. However, 
The master says that this will only cause more damage. The pulling the weeds will pull the wheat out with them. The weeds sown by the evil one will continue to grow until harvest time. Then all that is evil will be disposed of. And the righteous, we read, will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. God does not bring about the evil we experience, but we learn that God is aware of it. God cares about us in the midst of it. And when the end comes, God will make all things new. God promises that evil will not have the final say but that righteousness, justice, and love will. This doesn't make evil and brokenness easy, does it, my friends? We remain frustrated that this doesn't come to fruition sooner. But we continue to live in hope, knowing that God walks alongside us in the midst of all of it, and will one day bring about a new heaven and a new earth where all things return to the way that God created them to be, where we and the earth around us flourish. We mustn't forget that God experienced this evil and brokenness firsthand in the person of Jesus. He experienced brokenness and temptation. He saw illness and pain everywhere he walked. It was human brokenness that led to his sentence to death on the cross. Christ continued to walk alongside us in the worst of circumstances, and we know that evil did not have the final say. Christ lives, and we do too. So friends, what can we do with the weeds among us? What can we do about the evil and brokenness we experience in the world? Well, we can't fix it, but we can do this. We can acknowledge God's presence and God's care for us in the midst of all of it. And we can continue to care for the soil, bringing life and love to all. Dr. Seuss's The Lorax doesn't end on such a depressing note. In fact, it ends quite beautifully. A young boy learns from the Onceler's mistakes. The Onceler, who you remember, is the one who chopped down all the trees, entrusts the young boy with the final tree seed. The boy pleads with the town to plant the seed, to change their ways, to let the seed grow. And the townspeople sing, let it grow, let it grow. Let the love inside you show. Plant a seed inside the earth, just one way to know its worth. Let's celebrate the world's rebirth. We say, let it grow. We can't fix the problem of evil as much as we wish that we could, but we can certainly till the soil making the world just a little bit more wonderful. May we cling to the loving presence of God in the midst of life's difficulties and challenges. May we hold on with hope that God will make all things new, that evil will not have the final say. And may we till the soil. May we let God's love and justice grow in ways that bring forth beautiful and meaningful life for all. And all God's people said, Amen.
continue with the prayers of intercession. And when I say the words, hear us, O God, after each petition, I invite you to respond from home with the words, your mercy is great. So hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many places and in many ways. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. We pray for all congregations navigating what it means to be church at work in the world in the midst of coronavirus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their homes in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need, especially those for whom we name now aloud or in our hearts. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted, sustain our ministries, and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, together we say, Amen. And let us close worship by praying the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.